Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing synaptic vesicle fusion. So, so far what we have discussed is the formation of these core snare complexes as they're called. So, I should have written that down somewhere. So, this complex of the four alpha helices wrapped around one another is known as a core snare complex. And specifically at the moment it's what's known as a trans core snare complex. Okay, so you would call this a trans core snare complex. The reason being that the different snares are not in the same membrane, basically. Syntaxin 1 and SNAP25 are in the same membrane, but synaptobrevin 2 is in an opposing membrane. It's in this synaptic vesicle membrane. So, trans means on the other side, basically. So this is why this is a trans core snare complex, because uh, the um, snare proteins are on opposing, on opposite sides, basically, in different membranes. And, in fact, what you could do is you could put all three of these proteins in the same membrane. So, for instance, if they were all in the plasma membrane, and they'd still form one of these core snare complexes. But in that case, it would be called a cis core snare complex. Cis meaning on the same side. So that's C-I-S for cis, meaning on the same side. Okay, uh, so... What I now want to discuss is another protein that's important in the formation of these core snare complexes. And for this, I think we need to go on to the other side. Okay, right. So this other protein that I want to talk about is a protein known as NSEC1, which has another name known as, it's also known as MUNC18. Okay, and for this we need to talk about uh, syntaxin 1 in a bit more detail. So, syntaxin 1, what I've shown you so far is if this is the membrane, I've shown you it having a structure like this. Okay, so I've shown it having a transmembrane portion, so we'll call this the transmembrane portion, or the transmembrane region, you'll often see this uh, denoted. So you'll often see people just abbreviate this to TMR, and that stands for transmembrane region. Okay, then it has this snare motif here, which is this alpha helix, which is going to wrap up uh, with the alpha helices of synaptobrevin and SNAP25. Okay, so this is the snare motif. And then up here I saw, told you that this was something known as the triple helix which was three alpha helices uh, by um, each other's side. Okay, so this is our syntaxin 1 protein, and we covered it in blue previously. Now, this is what's known as the open conformation of syntaxin 1. So this is the open conformation of syntaxin 1. It can also have a different conformation, which is the closed conformation. This open conformation is the conformation it needs to be in to form the core snare complex with the other snare proteins. But it can also have a closed conformation. So let me show you the closed conformation. So you still have the transmembrane portion, you still have the snare motif, but now what's happened is you've effectively gone here and you've bent this bit back, basically. So we'll bend it back this way. And then here is the triple helix now. So this bit here, okay, let me highlight this up. This bit here, the, it high, circled in orange, is now down here, basically. It's been bent back, okay? So this is the closed conformation of uh, the syntaxin 1 protein. Closed conformation. I should just label it up as syntaxin 1. So, what you can see is in the closed conformation, syntaxin 1 has these three alpha helices. And let me just straighten this page up. It has these three alpha helices of the triple helix here. One, two, three. Those are the three alpha helices of the triple helix. It has them bent backwards, and they're now alongside this snare motif, which is another alpha helix. Now, you remember me telling you that the core snare complexes, they were formed from these four alpha helices, one from synaptobrevin 2 and syntaxin 1, and two from SNAP25, and that was the core snare complex. So really, this closed conformation, it's almost like these three alpha helices of the triple helix are replacing 
the um, the alpha helices from SNAP25 and Synaptor Brevin 2 that you would find in the core snare complex. So this conformation does not form uh, core snare complexes, basically. Okay, so how do you go from being in this closed conformation to actually forming core snare complexes? Well, basically what happens is when you produce the syntaxin 1, it's in this conformation here. Okay, and then what happens? We think, and this is still controversial science, but our good models, uh, it's a good model for what we think is happening. This protein, NSEC1, which is also called MUNK18, um, okay, so I'm drawing this protein nice and big, and I'll draw it in vivid purple. So this protein, as I have drawn very obviously here, is going to come and bind to the syntaxin 1 protein. So this in purple here, this is NSEC1. So this is NSEC1, which, as I say, also has another name. It's also known as MUNK18. And basically, it comes and binds to the closed conformation of syntaxin 1. Now, what does it allow to happen? Well, basically, it's going to help syntaxin 1 form core snare complexes, we believe. So, initially, in the syntaxin 1 is in the plasma membrane. Now, initially, there's also SNAP25 in the plasma membrane. So, where should I draw this? Um, we'll start another picture down here. So we also have syntaxin, uh, sorry, SNAP25 here, which is attached to the membrane and has these two alpha helices here. So this is a SNAP25 protein. Okay, so this is long before Synapto uh, Brevin 2 has ever arrived. We're going to start the formation of the core snare complex uh, by binding syntaxin 1 to SNAP25. So what's going to first happen is that NSEC1 is, so slash MUNK18 is going to bind to the syntaxin 1 in the closed conformation. Then it's going to help the syntaxin 1 assemble into a, um, into a pre-snare complex with the SNAP25. So it's going to find a molecule of SNAP25, and then what's going to happen is the MUNK18 or NSEC1 is going to help the um, syntaxin 1 to unfold and to return to this open conformation here. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to go back to the open conformation like this, and then the MUNK18 or NSEC1 protein, it will now just be bound to the triple helix up here. Okay, so what's happened? Basically, the MUNK18 or NSEC1 has bound to the syntaxin 1 protein when it was in the closed conformation. It then finds a SNAP25 protein and helps the SNAP25 associate with the syntaxin 1. Now, in order for SNAP25 to associate with the syntaxin 1, you need this snare motif here to be available for to interact with the alpha helices of SNAP25. So, what has to happen is the closed conformation has to go to the open conformation, i.e. you have to unfold this triple helix structure and um, open it back up so that the core snare, sorry, the snare motif is exposed. What then happens is the MUNK18 or NSEC1 protein then ends up bound to this triple helix when it's in, uh, when it's no longer associated with the snare motif and instead the syntaxin 1 protein is in this open conformation here. So here's syntaxin 1 now in the open conformation. The snare motif is here and is interacting quite nicely with the alpha helices of SNAP25. So this is the snare motif. Okay. And the triple helix is now bound to our MUNK18 or NSEC1 protein here. So NSEC1 slash MUNK18 is here. Whoops, MUNK18. And now what's going to happen is our synaptic vesicle is going to come along. So here comes our synaptic vesicle. Okay, and it's going to bring in synaptobrevin 2, so here comes synaptobrevin 2, and then what's going to happen is that that synaptobrevin 2 is going to join the fun, and you're going to form one of these uh, final um, core snare complexes. So let me draw the final picture again. And this is how I've now modified this picture from the picture I drew on the other side. 
Okay, so here's the plasma membrane that I've tilted this around basically 90 degrees so that it's more analogous to the picture we drew on the other side. Here is synaptobrevin 2. Here now is monk, uh, sorry, here is taxin 1 here. So let me draw this with its triple helix here. And it's now still bound to monk 18 or nsec 1. So this is how I modified the picture from the previous um, page. So in the previous page, I didn't show Monk 18 or NSEC 1. So I've given you this story so that I can now draw NSEC 1 slash Monk 18 on, and you won't be confused as to what that is. So it's really, really important protein. If you knock it out in mice, um, you get absolutely no neurotransmitter release whatsoever. So if you knock it out in vivo, it's fatal, basically. You get no neurotransmitter. So it's really, really important protein, and it seems to be really, really important in the formation of these coarse snare complexes, in assisting the uh, formation of these coarse snare complexes. And indeed, it does remain bound to this triple helix on the end of the syntaxin 1 protein, even once the coarse snare complexes have been formed. So here in purple is this star protein, uh, this NSEC1 slash MUNK18, which is bound to the triple helix of uh, the syntaxin 1 protein. And this is a core snare complex here between the snare motif of um, the syntaxin 1 protein and the alpha helices of synaptobrevin 2 here and SNAP25. So this is a core snare complex. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.